You know, when I started dating my ex-boyfriend, I did not expect that the day would arrive when he would try to kill me or put me in a grave, much like this one, hoping that the door will be closed and no one will see me. I did not imagine that I was entering into a relationship with a murderer in the same way that I never imagined when I started dating the dude from the US that I was meeting a murderer, a killer, somebody that would one day almost succeed to end my life. When I was busy dilly-dallying up and down clubbing with my girls, I never imagined the day would arrive when they would put me inside this little hole so that I don't ever come up again for air, breathe, live, exist. Basically what I'm trying to get at is that never in my life did I ever imagine that the very people that were closest to me would be those that would end my life or at least try to. And when I say to people that we're in the last days, 2 Timothy 3, perilous times are here. People that want to believe me because people want to hold on to the earth. And they want to hold on for dear life to the planet that is apparently not that abusive towards them. Except I am somebody's representative of a daughter. Somebody's representative of a friend. Somebody's representative of a colleague. Somebody's representative of a classmate. Basically, I could be anyone. And these people live among us. It was the nearest and dearest and closest people to me that did this to me. It was my friends. It was my family. It was people I decided that I was going to trust. I let them in my inner circle. And they put me in this casket. They put me in a box. And to this day, they're still trying to take that little green door that you're looking at over there and shut it. They are actively working using witchcraft day and night to the nail to shut that green door so that I never ever come up for him. But the small little hole that I am in that barely has any oxygen in it, the Lord has made sure that it stays open with that door yawning. And because of that tiny little sliver of a door that is open, all different kinds of manner of monsters are now trying to see if they can't creep into this ecosystem, come in and take me since everybody has locked me behind this gray wall. Put cement inside my casket that I might not move so that they can get away with murder. I have this tiny little opening only to speak and with it I'm letting people know that we're going home, the rapture is nigh because people are inside caskets just like this one. I have literally got creeps trying to crawl up my skirt by force, trying to enter my ecosystem even though I don't want them because they feel entitled to me. I scratch your back, you scratch mine, or really, okay, go. And then when I say go, they don't go. They just keep trying. They just keep throwing things at me. They just keep putting witchcraft all up in my grill. I say this over and over again, and I'll keep saying it, that I'm not under a spell. And all these curses and demonic attacks are only to evidence. The Lord has put me in this position to evidence just how bad the situation is. And how people are going to be so conceited and so self-centered that they will literally just glide by, walk right by a situation just like mine. And that if it was not for his intervention, no flesh would be saved. Matthew 24, at the end of it, it is written that if the Lord did not cut those days short, no flesh would be saved. It would be a tragedy and a, an abomination, a travesty, if I were to end up dying from these chains. But I won't have to because God is going to take me and those like me before things get to a point where these animals that only snap out of whatever trance they're in when it's too late won't kill any other man's daughter, won't kill any other company's employee won't put six feet under any other friend's girlfriend. If the Lord does not intervene, way more people than just me and the girl on the left and on the right of me would be buried, have their lives snuffed out and cut short, with their family members not even aware of what in the world wiped their own child off the face of the earth so quickly because the cause of their death was so freaking mysterious due to random curses being thrown at them by friends who are competing, colleagues who are trying to take their careers, boyfriends who don't want to have physical blood on their hands so they take out death curses. And so the girl dies in a car accident or just faints at school and never wakes up again. And the family's like, but she was only 22. No flesh would be saved if God did not rapture the church and just end this concern because more people are dying. More people are dying than is absolutely necessary. More people are dying deaths that are not bringing anybody to book. In history, we used to investigate murders 
where fingerprints were found on weapons, where boot prints, footprints, where evidence basically was found at a crime scene that could, with thorough investigation, lead to the killer. But witchcraft, which has ramped up very, very intensely in these last days, has done things in such a way as to take away the boot print from the crime scene, the fingerprint from the crime scene, the hair strand from the crime scene, the evidence essentially from the crime scene. No visible signs of forced entry. I used to work for an insurance company as a claims consultant and we often repudiated claims of people who said that they were stolen from either their cars or the goods inside their households. Uh, and the one of the reasons for repudiation was that there were no visible signs of forced entry. So did you leave a key with the neighbor on that day? It's your negligence. Sorry, we're going to um, repudiate the claim. Your car was stolen. Well, I mean, you need to not stolen. Sorry, uh, things were stolen from outside of your car, inside your car, your laptop. Well, we need to find visible signs of forced entry in your boot. Uh, so if a criminal did something to disable your lock, jam it as you are opening your car and they left with your laptop, the insurance company would repudiate the claim. I used to feel sorry for them. Yeah, well, that travesty uh, with the insurance company where people could not claim that they were stolen from because trespassers literally walked into their spaces where they trusted them to be and stole from them. Um, yeah, so too is witchcraft just like that. The people who come into your space who slither themselves in tend to be respected and trusted at first. They are friends, like I said. They are family members, like I said. They are those people that often have keys to your household. But by the time they leave, your house has been cleaned. Do you understand? You've been cleaned out. You are lacking everything all the way down to a teaspoon. And because there are no visible signs of forced entry, you can trust the insurance company is going to repudiate. There is no justice for victims of witches. It's what I'm trying to help you guys understand. There is no justice for mothers who lose daughters. There is no justice for uh, fathers who have to deal with the fact that some wicked man killed their own child. There's no justice. There is no justice for theft of finances. They do wealth transfers. That would be the equivalent of a bank robbery or a uh, an embezzlement, you know, stealing of funds, wiring funds through fraud on the internet that should they find the electronic signature that links back to you, the footprint, they can actually arrest the said hacker. Um, it is traceable, it is possible with a technologically advanced person that can hack to find a cyber criminal. But these witches are like the most exper experienced and most prolific of cyber criminals in the sense that theirs is a footprint that cannot be found. Theirs is a thievery that cannot be found. All you find is you sitting five years down the line having lost your career, five years down the line having um, miscarried six pregnancies, struggling to fall pregnant. You find yourself having lost a child in a freak accident, a drowning. Meanwhile, it was a human sacrifice because they needed the blood of an innocent you find yourself in these compromised losses and they all look very natural but there is no footprint there is nothing that can show you the hacker that hacked into your bank account and took a hundred thousand rands you can't find it there is no fingerprint and so for those reasons there is a repudiation of a claim those who come forward and speak against all of this insanity are called crazy and witches rely on that they rely on the fact that the moment you say Tagati, the moment you raise the fact that this is supernatural, it is spiritual, it is not natural, that most people are going to be very quick to write you off. So there are so many people whose bank accounts have been wiped clean that cannot lay claim at an insurance company because it looks as if though there are no signs of forced entry. It looks like you are the one that transferred a hundred thousand rands into the account of some stranger. It looks as if though you went for the job interview and just didn't make it. Somebody else got the job. It looks as if though somebody else got the guy or got the girl that you imagined was your future husband. It looks as if though you you know you're struggling with conception. There are a lot of women that have issues with fertility. Go see a fertility specialist and stop complaining and moaning and groaning about the miscarriages you keep having one after the other. 
It all just looks like nature, like life happened. There is no justice for the victims of witches. And if God did not cut these days short, no flesh would be saved because it is so hard to find the footprint of these animals. It is near on impossible to discover what they've done. And so for those reasons, their victims just go to the ground. So many of them have caused suicides. I know personally from a dream that I got a couple of years ago, my ex-boyfriend, uh, the Lord showed me one of his close friends and I'm still to confirm to this day if he's alive or not. I had a dream of him um, getting buried. Basically, it was his funeral. And the reason why he died was because he was thrown into so much obscurity by my ex-boyfriend and his witchcraft that even though he was a much better man than that, he found himself in a bar drinking his sorrows away because he lost everything and got into a bar fight and got killed at that bar. In my dream, my ex-boyfriend would not go to the funeral because he was embarrassed and ashamed of himself, but his wife went wondering why my ex would not go to the funeral and it was because of the guilt that he felt for leading him in a path that would ultimately cause him to get killed in a bar fight. This guy was a graduate from Vitz University with a financial degree. I believe he studied as at the last time I knew him up to honors level. My sister is also an academic within the financial field. She used to work with this guy in their beginning stages. That's how they knew one another. He had a bright future ahead of him. He entered into one of the best internship or graduate programs in the country that are very severely sought after by finance students. And God showed me that my ex-boyfriend came at his career and he lost all that. Despite being highly educated, highly ambitious, with a great future ahead of him, looking forward to marrying one of the baddest eligible bachelorettes in the country, and he found himself in a casket because he lost everything out of freak accidents, a chain of events that made him lose the career that he studied so hard at university to acquire. I am yet to confirm these things. I've been Googling his name, trying to find him, but unfortunately, I didn't know his surname. So I can't confirm if he's passed away or what, but I got this dream a couple of years ago where God showed me the level of collateral damage, the level of destruction these people cause. So while my ex did not pull out a death curse from out of a hat like a rabbit, on this guy, he charted co a course of events in his life that took his life. And if he did die, his parents have lost a son. They've lost the potential for a daughter-in-law. They've lost grandchildren. They have lost somebody that God gave lots of gifts, lots of talents, but somebody made a decision to do a wealth transfer from that person to themselves, draining them and rendering them essentially entirely worthless, making a whole degreed viable potential for those South African workforce employee unable to even get considered for one job interview. That's what these people take. That's what they do. That's what they do. As for women, um, the rape is, is really extreme. I like to call witchcraft roofies. Roofies is a date rape drug that is, if uh, put inside the drink of a woman, she wakes up in the morning with understanding that something happened because she can feel that something happened but with no memory of it having happened and with her not even lying next to the person that raped her and the only thing that can identify who raped her is a rape kit and even then the person would have had to rape her without protection for it to basically display his dna and if his dna is not in the system then it's going to be hard to figure out exactly whose semen is all up in there so people who get raped with roofies uh, women a good chunk of them a massive percentage of them never ever get justice for the rape that happened and witchcraft is just like roofies uh, there are people who are so embittered for getting venereal diseases or stds that they go out of their way after messing up with their boyfriends or girlfriends to force their exes to sleep with people that are hiv positive so that we can all be in this together uh, that is something that has been done to me personally where it is that i have had a boyfriend of mine cast a spell on me to date somebody with hiv so i would get hiv so we would all be in this together uh, but I gave my life to Jesus, so I don't fornicate. And that's been the chocolate block, that's been the barrier to entry, frankly, of this disease. But what that does is that it brings people who have got the disease and who have no scruples at all under heaven to basically protect everybody that they have sexual relations with from their disease by being honest, by being frank, by being um, 
uh, what is the word that I am looking for by disclosing that I'm HIV positive, are you happy to be with me or not? But no, we're dealing with people here who are actively spreading the disease and they cause them to cross paths with their exes so that their exes might indeed be put in a position to sleep with HIV positive people and that's how a better ex gets his ex infected after he goes out there and gets himself a disease. I have a family member who has had that done to where she uh, was put in the path of an HIV positive guy that knew he was sick and slept with her anyway, uh, knowing that that's what's going on. And in this like sexual session, she had lost her mind, her wits, her intelligence enough to allow herself to basically engage in a one night stand without protection with a new guy. And she contracted uh, HIV when those were not her sexual behaviors. It was not typical of the way that she tends to be um, when it came to sexual behavior. And just on that one night alone, she went and threw her whole future away because somebody decided to put a curse on her to contract a virus. Yeah, these are people's daughters. These are people's sons. These are people's daughters. Daughters and sons of which the parents are looking forward to grandchildren. They're looking forward to legacies being established. They're looking forward to entire futures. And all that is cut short because they just so happen to meet a Levi They just so happen to have met a witch, a psychopath, a ridiculous animal that found a magic wand that they can just wave in the sky and get a perfectly viable, beautiful woman to go on right ahead and get herself infected, infected with HIV by partaking in sexual activity that is uncharacteristic of her. They make people crazy. So when I say which was this um, Korobela or love spells are like roofies, they are. Because a lot of these guys come, they slip them away, slither their way into the lives of women or men, whatever, but I'm actually trying to speak to women. They slip their, themselves in here with love spells. These love spells make these women dizzy, uh, unable to basically think straight with their faculties intact. Imagine somebody viable and attractive that they would never have looked at was it not for the love spell. And not only imagine them attractive or viable, but also end up sleeping with them foolishly without even using protection. And then they find themselves infected and these animals often skip, they jump town. They skip town after they sleep with these people because it is a criminal record. It is a criminal offense to knowingly infect somebody with HIV so they pretend they don't know they had the virus. That's how they escape from the criminal charges, charges for attempted um, murder. And the way that they skip town is by making sure that they don't stay with these women, but they spread the disease anyway. So it's a form of roofies. It's you know that something has happened to your body. You can tell that you've had sex in the morning, but you don't know how it happened. You have no memory of it. These women literally cannot understand why all of a sudden they would they develop strong feelings for somebody why suddenly they had lust towards them why they slept with a person so quickly without thinking straight they get fogged up it's like roofies and i don't know how many times i have been roofied but by the uh, amazing grace of god i was chased i was a christian and there was a distance a barrier a barricade of swords standing in between me and this guy i have been roofied by my ex-boyfriend i've been roofied by basically a trail of guys that i've dated including one guy that called himself a christian the most recent dude in the u.s of a all of a sudden you find yourself with feelings for a person or a yearning to be with them when yesterday you were not interested in them and if i had basically dropped my panties i today especially with the dude in the usa would be hiv positive and i would have woken up knowing that something happened however having no recollection as to how i got there that's what these people do there is no justice for their victims there is no justice at all for their victims roofies is not the only issue like i said they do wealth transfers death curses and sometimes they kill people by second degree murder culpable homicide uh, so it's not a death curse, but it is something that sparks a chain of events that causes a suicide or that causes a person to end up dead because they were put in a position of compromise to find themselves basically dying. Like somebody that doesn't even drink alcohol, deciding to drown their sorrows because they lost everything overnight, getting in a car and then getting into an accident and passing away from drunken driving. Uh, it caused ex accidents. They literally take people to the grave and then once they have passed away, they also have the brazen audacity to rock up at the funeral because at the end of the day, it is someone they knew. It is their friend. It is their colleague. It is their cousin. It is their sister. So they go to the funeral having charted this person's life in a course that would ultimately land them in a casket. 
I personally, one of the biggest things that keep me alive and surviving and pushing another day and another day, even though I am extremely suicidal, I want to die, I don't want to be here. One of the biggest things that keep me alive other than the fear of God is the understanding of the charlatans that would be at my funeral. To know that the very people who put me in a position to grab a noose and kill myself, or the very people who made my life so horrible that I would get a heart attack and die on the spot or die in my sleep from a severity of stress or whatever, the very people who put me in a position to lose everything would have the brazen, incredible, gargantuan, disgusting audacity to pitch at my funeral and release some crocodile tears crying. My family members would be there. My friends would be there, former friends, when they would have put me in a position to die. So while I long very, very strongly to go to heaven, because I don't want to be here anymore, I can't stand this life. I don't, literally, they've put me in a position to have nothing to look forward to. So I don't want to live. I hate my life. I don't like life. I literally wish I was dead. But I stay alive and I push another day over and above the fear of God because I find it menacing and disgusting to fathom these freaks at my funeral that put me in a position to die. I cannot even imagine them at my funeral with any straight face, yet that's the kind of straight face that these witches tend to pull after their victims pass away from what it is that are the dominoes that they tipped against their lives putting people in a position to have their lives cut in half and then they attend their funerals once they have kicked the bucket so i wait on god to either break me through by deliverance or rapture the church a rapture is a recompense and a comeuppance that handles them that has no funeral no body no cadaver death has no sting so it handles them but so too does a breakthrough where i get my life back anyway despite what they did so a great deal of pride and a refusal to allow animals to attend my funeral that put me in a position to die it largely keeps me alive every single day there is no justice for victims of witches but for god he has a way of handling them of showing them up of bringing comeuppance the lord has a miraculous supernatural way of basically showing witches for the evil thing that they are because there is no justice in the physical sense like i said earlier there are no fingerprints at the crime scene there are no uh what is this not only fingerprints at the crime scene but there's also no justice um no no investigation even that is embarked on which is the grandest of travesties actually when a person dies from mysterious causes the fact that there isn't even an there is not even an investigation that is the saddest thing imagine somebody killing your child in cold blood and the police just sit they literally roll around toiling on their chairs in the police office and in the police station and not go to the crime scene to investigate dust for fingerprints nothing nobody embarks on a journey to give justice to the dead there is some kind of healing that comes to a family that is having the state actively working on recovering to justice that which is that what what, what was taken away from them there is some element of reprieve and relief in finally getting justice and also in knowing that the police are looking for the killer that investigations are underway stuff like that that stuff is being looked into it gives people a sense of closure but when your your family member your beloved just dies in cold blood with nobody investigating closing a case before it even opens that is a new level of bitterness out here in these streets and witches literally embark no one on a journey to investigate a crime they kill people and they go on to eat a burger at mcdonald's and then burp they steal careers they pull rugs from under people's feet they sacrifice babies in the wombs of women who are looking forward to having to giving birth to have children they 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 take away so much they take away so much and when death then is something that has happened everybody just gotta accept that binky passed away in her sleep binky got into a car accident binky got a heart attack binky committed suicide when she, she was absolutely fine day before yesterday and no one investigates no one investigates 
No one. No one investigates because it looked natural. Mm. She looked, I mean, like, who investigates a suicide? It is a suicide. It is a suicide. It is a suicide. If I were to die a suicide death because of a death curse that has been sent to me by an animal in America and another one in South Africa, two of my exes, if at all under heaven, I were to finally capitulate to the darkness they keep on encircling my neck with to strangle me to death, there would not be a single police investigation, not in the US and not in South Africa. There would not be anybody working to actually find my killers. Only God would know that his daughter was murdered by two animals. Only God would know that people charted the course of his daughter's life in a way that would basically result in her death. Only God. And I would therefore be sitting in eternity with no justice. With no justice. That's witchcraft for you. Not only have I been stolen from entire career, not only have I had the severance of my person from family, from love, not only have I been pushed by force to the edge of a cliff that I might jump over it, but I am also now living in such cold and harsh conditions that essentially the evidence of those that would have put me in a position to die is stark and yet nobody's even trying to prevent the death. No one is even trying to intervene. If I don't get intervened on behalf of by God, who else is going to intervene? Matthew 24. If God does not cut these days short, no flesh would be saved. Because you see, sorcery in the last days is going to be so voluminous yet so hard to catch that all the interventions that mankind embarks on to deal with wickedness in the human race would be easily eradicated or overcome by the discovery of people of witchcraft. They find witchcraft out and then they believe they can get away with everything. Indeed, confirming in the scriptures that the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That wickedness of the human heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked has displayed, it has proven, it has shown that if at all people can get away with something that they in and of themselves once upon a time vocalized they would never do, they would do it. There is no end to the level of wickedness that human beings can do and witchcraft is this thing that they discuss that helps them steal when they wouldn't do it physically. It helps them kill when they wouldn't do it physically. It helps them destroy when they wouldn't do it physically because they are just like their father, the devil, who steals, kills, and destroys. So when I say I hate witchcraft and its witches, when I say I hate witchcraft and its witches, understand it is only because they are a class of demonic people that almost everybody on the earth can get no justice against. I can deal with a physical murderer any day because the police can charge him, the police can break his door down, the police can collect his fingerprints, the police can find his DNA on a crime scene, and the police can pursue him, making him a fugitive for life, running from justice. If at all he escapes a prison, he will never be able to show his face in a regular mall again. I can have respect any day for a bit of a Tabo Besta or respect any day for a bit of a Pablo Escobar, a person that's on the run from police because he is a criminal and they're looking for him. That even though he is elusive and keeps on escaping them, bottom line is he can never live a normal life. He is a fugitive. His life is hard. He can't just show his ugly head anywhere he goes because he's going to get busted. That's exactly what happened with Tabo Besta. Went and escaped out of prison, then decided to rear his ugly head at a Woolies with his little accomplice Nandipa. And the two of them were busted that they were caught a couple of weeks down the line they were found in tanzania trying to skip more borders they were busted because they committed physical crimes but witches recline their chairs witches they sit in a hammock and they swing in it witches they frequent the edgars they frequent the mall they frequent the pick and pay they get out of the house in the morning and they walk their dogs they go to the park they take their school their kids to school drop them off and pick them up again witches rock up in the office and they continue to collect salaries they stand in front of a boardroom of people and they address them in a meeting. Witches are thriving citizens of society that look above a reproach that everybody respects. They call them boss. They call them sir. They call them ma'am. They call them teacher, professor. They call them mom, dad, sister. They call them sweetie, best friend, my love. That's what witches are. They can show their ugly faces in society without anybody knowing what in the world under heaven they're into. And that's why I can't stand them. I literally go so far as to say I hate them with a voluminous hatred. I cannot stand them because they are undetectable. And the undetectable thing that they are makes them menaces in society that 
walk among their victims unbeknownst to themselves a witch will literally go and bewitch her best friend and then go to her wedding after sabotaging that after literally standing in the middle of that marriage after bewitching her best friend's marriage she will comfort that same best friend when the husband is cheating on her those are witches i cannot stand them and while there is no room in the heart of a disciple for hatred that's what i must explain to you guys the bible does however say that you must hate even that which has been touched with wickedness and that's what witches are i hate them they are different from everybody else because everybody else's serious crimes can get them pursued and put in some prisons Put in some orange dungarees, be behind some jail cells and eat like muddy porridge. Everybody else that is a criminal on the earth, however heinous their crimes, can get caught. There is a possibility of them getting caught. And if they don't get caught, they live very uncomfortable lives because they're on the run. Which is, like I said, they live among us. They continue to collect salaries. Their bosses that bewitch their own freaking subordinates. I had two of my former bosses at MTN3, make that three, that bewitched my career walk out let's rock up and sit opposite my boss in a cubicle at work morning boss hi hi Karaba, how are you please pass me that file meanwhile she has spiritually manipulated my future but she's in the office she's committed theft but she's sitting right opposite me there was this guy when i was working at mt and an indian dude who was an administrator with us when we were on the come up together so i was shocked when i found this out about him he started a little business back home where he had a little shop that he was selling things out of and so he made a decision that he was going to supplement his business stock with staff stationery so he stole stationery from the office he used to work for procurement so he was able to basically create purchase orders for voluminous amounts of stationery that he was aware that most people paid no mind to stationery in the office it's just so easily distributed and when pens go missing hardly anybody notices so this dude imagined he could steal erasers pens rulers and you literally cre cre come up with purchase orders to buy bulk stationery and then go and stock his little shop in Lanasia where he used to stay he got busted he got caught and lost his job it was like a whole thing that spread like a rumor a bad wildfire in the office and everybody was shocked that oh my goodness how could a dude do that he had such a thriving career he had so much promise i got way more respect for that little buffoon than i do for the dude who does a stationary transfer from a company using spiritual means because that dude was busted because a money trail was found a paper trail was found uh, there were anomalies in the stock on site at the office there was there was there were way too many orders made for the amount of stationery that was on the floor and after an investigation it was discovered that this dude was swindling the company through stationery way more respect i had for that oki because he got apprehended that's what's good witches they just steal stationery and don't nobody know don't nobody know the stationery just goes on right ahead and makes like a supernatural ominous sighting of a strange aberrationic a virtue and find feet and walk witches make your pen in the office just find feet witches somehow raise up a caucus of insane and insensitive beasts in the office to come up with a lie conjuring it conjuring it up from their orifices against you and get you fired without cause and then you go to the ccma and strangely ominously despite having all the evidence in favor of you it is that exculpatory you still lose the case witches make people crazy and unable to love those that they're supposed to love they make mothers abandon their children they make fathers abandon their children they make everybody in society essentially disregard a brazen and absolutely wonderfully mellifluous travesties they make everybody pretend there is no freaking polka dot like painted with stripes that are red and yellow elephants in the room they make everybody ignore the elephant in the room because if you dared pay attention to that elephant it means i get to lose my swagger as a witch that elephant is too talented that elephant is frankly the best elephant for the job but i don't want you looking at it so i'm gonna make all of south africa 
Africa ignored the gargantuan polka dot and stripy painted elephant in the damn room. I hate them with a violent passion. I likely need to repent from this hatred, but the only reason why I can't stand them so much is because indignation is incredibly exquisite in me over the fact that there is no avenue for justice at these erroneous freaks. No avenue for justice. Every other crime makes criminals uncomfortable, except for this one. They kill, they rape, they devastate, they destroy, they decimate, they rip wombs out of that one is just especially particularly near and dear to me. They rip wombs out of women who want to make like God's people and fill the earth and occupy it. They take pregnancies. They not only capitalize on women who want to kill their own babies through abortions, but they make fer they make perfectly fertile women who want to have ten children and so therefore show feminists flames infertile. They take away the reproductive prosperity of the human race and God is gathering for himself a people for his own possession. And so when you mess with the conception, with the beginning of human life, you basically rip out the apple of God's eye. That's what's good. His, the apple of his eye is the human race and witches sacrifice babies before they're born by causing women to miscarry one baby after the other, after the other, after the other, just so they can get a career. So you can forgive me, I suppose, for me walking in what appears to be an unbiblicality due to my exorbitant hatred of these ravenous beasts. The only reason I can't stand them is because if I don't stand them, who under heaven else is going to not stand them on my behalf? Who under heaven is going to not stand them on God's behalf? Because God is just, do you understand? And witches get away with murder. They are, I believe, among the grandest reasons why it is that the world even comes to an end. Because even when people want to do right, they are under a spell so they can't. Even when people want to fix their lives, when drug addicts want to correct their situation with constantly schnaffing lines of cocaine, they've got some witch coming up against them that they might not get their life back together again. So the junkie goes back. The junkie relapses into drug use because even though they have gone to 10 freaking interviews, they cannot successfully interview, not even at one. So the one thing that would have given this person a new leaf on life to do better this time gets pulled from under their feet because they've got a witch in their life that refuses that they should get a job and fix themselves they keep drug addicts drug addicts they keep homeless people homeless they keep the world in a state of chaos they refuse to let people repent they refuse to let people walk away from fornication look at my life I've got witches literally trying to make me a prostitute. I've got witches trying to make me fornicate. I walked away from sin. I gave my life to Jesus and witches are like, I'm sorry, you're going to have sex. And no, it's not going to be with your husband. You're not going to get a husband. Putting a woman who has experienced the joy of sex prior to coming in Christ, celibate for 12 years, lambasting her with lust, lambasting her with lust so that she will eventually capitulate, settle. That's what witches do. If I don't hate them, who is going to hate them? If I don't despise the living daylights out of whatever the crap they are, who's gonna do it? Somebody gotta hate these freaks. Somebody gotta call them out for what they are. This world is busy pontificating their agenda, proliferating it. The world is busy saying everybody has a right to religion. Who under heaven is going to be the mortician? The, 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 the person who, um, basically investigates and does uh, 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 what he, autopsies on dead bodies. Who is going to give the autopsy report on these dead beasts? Who? If I don't do it. They're destructive. They make it hard for people to embrace Jesus. They resent people's leaves on life. When people want to make a turn, a change for the better, they stand in the way. When a woman, goodness gracious, I don't know how many witches try to keep me with my ex-boyfriend when I wanted to walk away from him. I stayed with that dude five years too long because witches kept on be like, no, you're gonna be with this bad dude. The same bad dude of which in and of himself was busy with me in a relationship that I wanted to leave. So they keep you in a situation that is making sure you cannot grow from strength to strength. The very thing that is necessary and impressive for you to do because it is good. The life decision you are making to stop taking drugs the life decision you are making to stop drinking alcohol. I had a cousin who sent me a spell and to this day she is still sending me spells to get me to basically pop open a bottle of wine in my mother's wine cellar because of frustration and depression until I become an alcoholic. I quit drinking alcohol not because I was an alcoholic but because I couldn't handle my liquor. Something like three years before I even turned to Jesus. I was already not drinking alcohol. It never 
took with me. It never sat well with me, alcohol. And my family has got a history with alcohol. My dad was an alcoholic. So it was ideal that it never took. It never took. It never really got to basically start driving in my life. Otherwise, it would have converted me into an alcoholic just like my older sister is. Mm. And this cousin was given a nice little bright idea by the devil to get me so miserable that I will one day, since there's so much wine in my mom's like little kitchen um, stash over there, that I will just like open a bottle and just you know put it back here and start to like drink up a storm to drown my sorrows. She tried to get me to go back not only to alcohol but cigarettes. I used to smoke. Peer pressure made me smoke. It also never took, and that's why I quit. I quit cigarettes cold turkey. I did not struggle with addiction. I didn't even like them. I only smoked because everybody on the left and on the right was like, "Can't try it," and so I did. But once I realized that it doesn't suit me, it's stupid and it's ugly, and I'm a black woman, have you ever seen an old black woman smoking? It is so unseemly. I just like flushed those cigarettes down the toilet and I never looked back. I stopped smoking before I stopped drinking. So something like four to five years prior to my redemption in Jesus Christ, I was already a non-smoker. And I had the same cousin. Basically, I had a dream where she was throwing lit cigarettes in my bedroom while I picked them up and threw them outside again on some. But why do you keep putting these cigarettes here? And in the next dream, it would be alcohol. I've had dreams where I'm actually actively drinking wine or drinking beer. I've never been an alcoholic and I never even got addicted to cigarettes. I just smoked them because I was a naughty little girl. But witches, they wanted me to go back there. So habits that you kick because you had to. Because they were not, they didn't suit you. Because it's healthy not to go out like that anyway. They will take you back on them. They will put people on drugs that never used to take drugs. They will put people on alcohol that never used to like alcohol. They will put people on cigarettes that couldn't even stand the smell of cigarettes. I couldn't stand the smell of cigarettes and yet I used to do it. I couldn't stand other people around me that had been smoking the way they smelled. And I knew that I smelled like that. But I continued anyway. I one day eventually decided to quit and my cousin was like, no, you're going back. Mm, that's which is for you. If I don't hate them, who will? They don't want anybody to do right. They don't want anybody to be okay. So if you just so happen to be one of those holding on for dear life to Jesus people, like I am, they will then be like, you know what? Karabu will never go back to smoking. She will never go back to drinking. She will never fornicate. And frankly, I don't like to watch a person live a better life than me. I don't like to watch a person do a better thing, not go around in these streets, like fornicating, like no man's business. So... I mean, okay, fine. Stay chased as much as you want to stay chased. Sandra freaking D bursting with virginity. Won't go to bed till you're lawfully wed. I'm bowing and go and play Grease Lightning like it's still the 80s, do you? But you're going to do it from inside a casket. We're not going to get to watch you rise, get married, have the children. Basically do what under heaven it is that you want to do. That's wishes for you. My goodness. So here it is that, look at me, I'm Sandra D. Bursting with virginity. Won't go to bed till I'm not fully wet. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I'm annoying. And they're like, goodbye to Sandra D. And they're trying to close this green little door, this little green door, and say, disappear forever because nobody's going to get to watch you do a better thing. They destroy their own lives with immorality. They decimate themselves with curses upon curses that God warned them against. The Lord told them, if you don't repent, you're going to end up in this trajectory. If you don't repent, you're going to contract HIV. If you don't repent, you're going to lose your job. If you don't repent, you're going to lose your family. If you don't repent, you're going to lose your son. If you don't repent, you're going to yeah, God keeps telling them. And then they go on right ahead and lose the sun anyway, get the HIV anyway, lose their jobs anyway, lose everything because of sorcery. And then they look back, these, mon these, these, these ominous beasts, and they're like, I'm sorry, I know somebody who has not done everything that I've done, and I don't want to get to watch them rise and do a better thing. So I'm going to lock them up. And that's what's going on with me. But I will say this over and over and over again. I'm not under a curse. I never have been. I am an example of what witches do to people who don't have Jesus. They lay them waste. They put them in destitution. A lot of people are not where they're supposed to be in life. They're disillusioned. They're just merely going through the modes. Every single day it's a drag. They're like Neo in the Matrix before he gets found by the agent, by, by Morpheus. Just going through the modes, working a cubicle job that is annoying with a stupid boss that won't stop yapping, yapping, yapping all up in your grill when you're bigger and better and smarter even than that boss. But you can't get your break because some, some witch is literally standing in front of your prospects. You were made for so much more. And now all you can think about are your earlier days when you had so much ambition and yet you were not able to fulfill any of it. Not because you're lazy, but because somebody stood in the way of you breaking through with everything you tried. Causing you to butt your head against brick wall upon brick wall upon brick wall until you literally settle for being the subordinate of some stupid annoying rapping boss that ain't got jack on you but that you have to honor because hey somebody gotta pay the bills that's what witches do to people and if the lord god almighty did not cut these days short if the lord did not cut these days short no flesh would be saved i'm just an example i am just a monument a monolith something that the lord is using to show people what he's talking about when he says get in the ark we're going home get in the ark we are leaving 
Because if you do not want to get in this arc, then I'm going to be the one that's judging the world. Currently, witches are judging the world. Currently, they're the ones that are making decisions as to who gets to live and who gets to die. They're the ones making decisions as to who gets to thrive and not. As to what salaries people are going to earn, how many children they're going to have. Today, witches are the ones that are making decisions for your future, what university you're going to study at, and whether or not you're even going to finish your degree or if you're going to drop out. They are making that decision for you. So come into the ark so that I can finally judge them for what they're doing. However, in the tribulation, it is not witches that are deciding what you're going to do, how far you will go, and no further. It is God. He's the one that is pouring plagues down on the earth to handle every man, woman, child. Every city laying it waste and destitute and absent of people entering into the ark and so therefore finding safety. They go in and find themselves severely compromised, left in a world destitute of God, devoid of the Holy Spirit in believers, cold with the devil running rampant out in these streets, worsening even that which witches could do. The allowances for demons are currently restrained, but they're going to be let loose like bra, like, like boobs in a bra at the end of a day. Let them hang. Yeah, that's exactly what devils are going to do. They're going to be hanging. And witches are going to be using them in increasing measure. So if you want to see the wrath of God, you will not repent. There is nothing we can do on this time. These people are into ill-gotten gain. They have gotten away with murder upon murder upon murder. And they will continue to get away with murder. There is no incentive for them to stop because they have literally transferred everybody's wealth and prosperity into their own bank accounts. What incentive does a criminal of that prolific nature have to repent? Nothing other than judgment. So they won't stop. It's only going to go from bad to worse. You will keep losing your daughters. You will keep having stupid men rape your girls with roofies. You will keep on watching yourself slip th like over and over and over again in job interviews that frankly were already banked as yours and yet you don't get the job. You are going to continue to hit brick walls because you literally work next to some Satanist. That's what's going to keep happening. So all you have, humanity, I'm just putting this out there, is the rapture. Allow yourself to get caught up because God is going to judge witches in the tribulation. And in the tribulation, he's not only going to be judging witches, but every other sinner, everybody else. Witches and those who commit crimes physically and not spiritually are going to be in one clump lamp basted. But witches, I believe, will have been one of the biggest reasons why God stopped everything because there is no justice against the crimes committed by witches, possible or feasible for the human race. Only Christians know what's going on. Only us. Only Christians are away. What in the world is going on? And so because we're the only ones that know what's happening, everybody else is a captive. The Bible, it is written that the Lord has come to basically set liberty to the captives. He has come to set the captives free. That's what the scriptures say. So if in the last days there is a great apostasy and most, most people hate Jesus, most people don't want to embrace the gospel. Those of us who are in a position to therefore communicate to the world that Christ has come to set you free. You don't have to be under the bondage of your like freaking stupid like witch colleague. You don't have to be under the snare of your witch mom or your witch sister or your witch cousin. You do not have to be under that snare. But you don't want Jesus because it's not cool to be Christian. Top of that, it, it's, con it's constantly and in increasing measure um, persecuted and therefore disincentivized to be a Christian in 2023. Your channel keeps on getting cancelled on social media. You keep on getting shadow banned. People keep on spitting on you. It's becoming harder and harder to become a Christian. So when then people are disincentivized from turning to the one true God, however, they don't like the bonds and the chains that they are in. It means that the world is now basically at the beck and call and the mercy of these cantankerous, lacking in self-respect freaks, because that's what they are. It's written in God's word that like a bear that has lost its cubs, so too is a person that lacks self-control. Or like a city without walls, so too is a person that lacks self-control. Witches lack self-control. They're like a city without walls and a bear that goes rogue because it has lost its cubs. They just spit on everything. Bah, 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 bah. Bullets all over the show. They just afflict every... I don't know. Like, I just actually got a flash vision now of what uh, how the Lord describes witches as well. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie The Mask. There was this one evil dude that ends up wearing the mask that Jim Carrey um, is not wearing. And he gets shot a whole bunch of times, blah, 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 blah. And then all the bullets in his belly, he basically swallows them, puts them in his mouth, and then his mouth becomes the... Bruh, 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 bruh. It becomes the the, 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 um, the, bull, the the gun. That's what witches are like. They harbor all this hatred and resentment against the world, and then they bullet everyone in the room with their little tr tr craft that they have learned. Everyone they're jealous of, everyone they envy, everyone they have a bone to pick with, everyone they enter into a fight with becomes their victim. 
And this is because they get possessed by devils that make them impossible to exercise self-control. Once they enter into this thing, they become so addicted to it that they can't self-deliver. And because the world has no incentive at all currently due to how much Christians are being persecuted to turn to Jesus, the only way out is being ignored. That is Jesus. So when people are ignoring that Christ has come to set them free and wishes are running rampant, causing immorality on the earth, causing people who want to stop taking drugs to go back to cocaine, causing people who want to stop cheating on their wives to go back to the prostitute, the brothel, causing people who want to do a better thing to stop, causing alcoholics to go back to the, uh, to the bottle. When that is the earth, when that is the earth, there's nothing left, guys. God is going to take out the restrainer. He's going to take his Christians, rapture the body, and be like, okay, let's go. They don't want me. Let's go. Let's show them that I am God. There is no incentive on earth currently to repent. Not by enough people. One or two of these rando witches might repent. One or two of their victims might. But not enough to fix the earth. South Africa is going to continue to be a cesspool of darkness where people are twisting in the wind unbeknownst to themselves as to how they got to where they got when they had a different set of motivations initially. When they had a different target, when they had different goals, but now they're in some funny little trajectory that they didn't sign up for. The world at large is going to continuously keep getting their destinies determined by nefarious people who ruin their lives and then try to force others to ruin their lives too by spiritual manipulation. There's not enough people repenting globally to fix the epidemic of witchcraft on the ground that is without justice because the only true justice against witches is Christianity. It is God, it is Jesus, but don't nobody want the Lord. So granted that these days are going to be that wicked, God has got to cut them short. I would perpetually be the victim of my cousins, perpetually the victim of my former friends, perpetually the victim of some strange, lewd, perverted, licentious men on the internet. I will perpetually be the victim of people who think that they can try a new thing and 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 a new thing! Until I'm so exasperated that I will either die or capitulate. If God does not cut these days short for me, even I wouldn't be saved. So we're going home. I have warned people over and over and over again against these licentious freaks that trust that nobody's going to catch them in the act. And they're not wrong. Because while I've busted them because I have a spiritual gift to these criminals, most people just don't have a gift. And even if they do, they ignore it. They think it's just a dream. I will ever keep getting these ominous freaks saying of me that I'm crazy. And the world out there saying, yeah, she must be crazy because she thinks everything is because of Satanists. Because she's constantly talking about witches, witches, witches. She's losing her mind. Yeah. People who are calling this rubbish out for what it is and highlighting the, the, the magnitude of the epidemic, just how poignant the issue is. We are going to just end up getting called crazy nutbags that deserves to be that deserve to be buried from all of society when they are rather watch men and women on the wall warning the earth of the actual true nature of the catastrophe. The chaos is real, it is alive, but we are gonna continue to get ignored unless the Lord raptures the church. So allow me in my little casket, this small little hole that I've been buried in by uh, close friends and family members, people who were supposed to love me, colleagues I trusted, people with whom I had very good relationships once upon a time, but who decided I don't get to live? Yeah, allow me to come from this hole that they've buried me in and let you guys know that my trauma is not in vain. The day is going to arrive when people are listening to me from this very casket. However, I will have been translated to heaven. We're going home. And the reason why the Lord would have raptured the church is because despite the warnings that people like me sent you, you ignored us and literally decided to believe some ominous freaks on the left and on the right of you that are manipulating even how you think. They're mind controlling people into disregarding testimonies and witnesses against their kingdom. And pronounced to themselves those people belonging to those kingdoms, to that kingdom, that they're going to hell. They properly find pleasure in the fact that people don't believe everybody that is a whistleblower against their kingdom. They, they pride themselves in the fact that it's hard for them to get caught when they're going to hell. But what does it profit us all to wait for the day that they go to hell while they decimate the earth, while they destroy it, while they lay it waste, while they purge on the earth? Just like the movie The Purge, that's what witchcraft does. It makes crime legal, never mind one day a year, but 365 days a year. They purge on the earth. While nobody brings them to book because that's exactly what they do. Crime is legal in the kingdom of darkness. All crimes. Murder is legal. Your murderer literally will walk into the office the day after casting a spell that put you in a car accident. And nobody will investigate that because it looks natural. Crime is legal all year in the occult. All different kinds of crimes that we have put in statute and legislation to regulate are legal in the occult. I have said over and over again, I don't understand why countries do not regulate witchcraft because the things that people do in sorcery are illegal in physical terms. Theft in physical terms is illegal. Murder is illegal in physical terms. Misappropriation, embezzlement, all these things are illegal in 
physical terms, extracting a pregnancy out of a woman's womb when she's not actively trying to even have an abortion in a country, even in a country where abortion is legal. That's illegal. It's like stabbing a woman in the belly while she is carrying. She survives in hospital, but medical protocol has it such that in the event of mother and child both being in danger, they will first save the mother and not the child. So the mother survives, but the child is gone. They kill women's babies in their wombs. The criminal in question must be arrested, but it's not happening. So God Almighty is going to take the church to give justice to everybody since people refuse to turn to him to deal with these menaces all over society. They have caused chaos in the cosmos that is irrecoverable from. There's no getting out of this. There's no getting out. No getting out. Since it is not regulated and since no one will call it to task, since anything goes in sorcery, since witch doctors can commit crimes and get away with them, so bad is it that they even go on TikTok and basically speak about how they committed crimes using witchcraft. But nobody arrests them. Nobody calls them to book because it's a religion and it's not provable. There are no fingerprints. Well, guess then who is the forensic um investigator of note? It's Jesus. He sees the fingerprints. He sees that which is done in the darkness that we have been trying to sing on the rooftops like a canary about as the body of Christ, but nobody will listen to us. We are trying to get people delivered from these things. But in a world where there is such little belief, and where we are literally beleaguered on all sides by all of this ominous activity in the kingdom of darkness. All we can do is go home. All we can do is go home. There are too many people practicing. Look at celebrities in the entertainment industry, how they keep doing rituals on stage. Do you think they're going to one day wake up and decide not to do that? Do you think little Uzi Vert is one day going to make a decision not to have a whole concert with an upside down cross and a ritual in front of the whole world? Everybody knowing that it is a ritual. Do you think that's going to stop? Do you think Sam Smith is going to stop performing unholy? On a stage doing a physical ritual at the Grammys in front of everybody. Do you think they're going to stop? No. Do you think Doja Cat is going to stop uploading lewd content on Instagram? Bewitching the living delights out of her entire page? No. They're not stopping. They have no incentive. There is nothing to stop them but for the wrath of God. Nothing. They will keep on electrifying fans with witchcraft. They will keep on taking jobs from under your feet. They will keep on pouring out skills out of corporate South Africa and the world at large of actually skilled people in favor of mediocre randos that know how to do witchcraft. That's what's going to continue to happen and in an increasing measure until there is no one good left on the earth. Until everybody's now like literally turning to this darkness just to survive, just to keep their jobs. And when then the whole world starts to muddy the earth with witchcraft, there is nothing. The guys, we're going home. Wishes. Thank you very much for making the earth a cosmic chaotic atmosphere. The reason why there are so many alien sightings all over the show is because you have opened so many damn portals. That things that operate in the cosmos that ought stay in that ecosystem are coming into the earth because of your freaking experimentation. We're going home. You have muddied the earth. You have destroyed the planet. And nobody can patch it back together again other than the son of man. So I am calling everybody then who will listen to me, however few of them there might be, to repent. Because the rapture is nigh, thanks to them witches on the left and on the right of you, making the earth a cesspool of darkness that is insufferable. I'm out.